Everyone knows the initial strategic move one should make when piecing together a jigsaw puzzle. Build the border first. This is because the border pieces by their nature are the easiest to detect and match up. Also, once you have borders, it's easier to orient the various smaller images on the inside with reference to the larger external framework. For a similar reason, the initial strategic move we should make when piecing together our understanding of Luke's gospel is to detect the borders he has given to his narrative. This way we'll have a kind of frame to orient the smaller individual stories within it. Now it's common knowledge that the chapters, headings, and verses we have in our modern Bibles weren't a part of the original texts, so they can be as much of a distraction from this process as an aid. This is because most of us will have a difficult time looking through these added layers of divisions and headings on the page. So it's preferable to use a pared-down presentation of the text, like the one found in the ESV Reader's Bible, where the headings and verses are removed. So after all those layers are set aside, what framing has Luke himself embedded in his narrative of the Gospel? Well, let's begin by reading Luke 9.51. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Jesus has been ministering throughout Galilee primarily in the first half of Luke's Gospel, but the time has come for a major shift or turning point in his ministry. He will travel to Jerusalem in order to be taken up. In other words, chapter 9 relates how the time has come for Jesus to begin his journey to heaven. So he begins to travel south from Galilee toward Jerusalem from where he will ascend. When we turn to the final verses of the Gospel of Luke, Luke 24, 51 reads, And he led them out as far as Bethany, which was on the outskirts of Jerusalem, of course, and he was carried up into heaven. In 9.51 it said his time had come to be taken up, and in 2451, it describes him actually carried up. That is, Jesus reached the goal at the end of the gospel, which he set out to accomplish starting way back in chapter 9, the turning point in the gospel. So Luke has divided his gospel into two halves, and it's clear that the second half is framed by Christ's journey to heaven. The various parts within the second half all relate to that journey which means ultimately that the story of Zacchaeus, which is found in chapter 19, is also related to that heavenly journey. We'll be discussing why this is important in future videos. But one final observation for now. Luke's emphasis on the ascension might strike a Christian as fairly predictable. After all, this is a gospel. But you might want to do some homework and see how common it really is that an evangelist describes Christ's ascension. And don't forget that the last verses of Mark are not certainly a part of his original gospel, as the footnotes indicate.